What is it like going back to probably one of the most iconic movies again? Um, for me, it was very powerful. Uh, what's particularly important for me is that the first movie exists, and then this movie exists in this in the sort of uh, lore of the Halloween franchise, if you will. Mm -hmm. That the, the way this movie was approached was the original movie, and then this movie. So there is no, there are no other sequels. There are no other storylines. There is just what happened on Halloween night in Haddonfield, and now what happens on Halloween night 40 years later. Are you still in Haddonfield? Oh yeah. Wow. Oh no, Laurie Strode has never left because Laurie Strode has believed from the beginning that Michael Myers is coming back. And it has been her dogmatic belief uh, that has really ruined her life. You know, this is her entire, I realized it today, it's her entire adult life. She was 17 when this happened. Mm -hmm. So she became an adult having survived the trauma, and now all of her adult life, she has been on the hunt saying, this man is coming back. And she's lost her marriages, she lost her child. She's still in Haddonfield, waiting for him. So in a sense, this it's just the first one and now this. There's nothing, don't well, forget all the stuff in between. That's, that's the idea, the way we took it, uh, Danny McBride and Jeff Radley and myself, um, uh, we're old film school buddies. We love the Halloween movies, every one of them. Yes. Uh, when we got the opportunity to crack into the franchise ourselves and started looking at the various threads and mythologies that kind of came about mm -hmm. through the series, we just kept going back to the original, thinking the original one is going to be our Bible. We're going to take, a, take our lessons from that stylistically and narratively, and then we jump 40 years. Uh, acknowledging some of the other elements of the other films as rumors or things that people have talked about, but the truth is, where we are, where we go, and that's the game we play. Ah, so it jumps right there. All right, what was it like? Did you put back on the Laurie Strode wig? Well, originally Laurie Strode didn't have a wig. Um, that was Laurie Strode's own hair, and as we know, if we've followed my of uh, <laughs> over any period of time, uh, my hair's gotten a little shorter and shorter. Um, it got short quickly it was in, after that. It got short. Uh, pretty quick. Yeah, it went. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, ish, but. Yeah. What was important was that we meet a woman who has not been focused on anything but Michael Myers for 40 years. And so it was crucial, it was actually David's call. Mm -hmm. Because if you saw me, if Lori was, if I was wearing Lori Strode's clothes, you guys know me pretty well. I've been in, I'm now at this point, I was in that movie, I was introducing me. Yeah. It was my first yeah. movie. Now, of course, I've made many movies. And so uh, there is a ubiquity to me. There's a ubiquity to me politically. There's a ubiquity to me in, in, as, a, as a spokesperson and a saleswoman and as an actress. And it was important that when we met Lori for the first time that right away you knew she was Lori Strode. Mm. How did the evolution of killing folks in these movies, how has it moved up to now? You know, it's very different in the beginning you killed folks and it was kind of like crazy. You just saw blood falling and they're hanging, they do whatever. Now it's a little more graphic when they kill folks. Is it more graphic or is it, mel or is it mellower? Well, uh, um, well, a couple things. One is, you know, we took a lot of our technical lessons from, from Carpenter's original film and we really are trying to play off tension and uh, we let shots go for a long, long period of time and thinking that that's, that's gonna help us deliver that kind of psychology for the viewer and, it, and that really works At the same time sometimes there's just a great opportunity to just you know drive it home and mm -hmm. and you can't resist <laughs> it so it, it I'll, I'll say we always were playing with what that balance is and then when we're in the editing room we just want to make it delicious really yeah. how tough is Lori in this movie <laughs> well it's a movie about trauma mm. it's a movie really about what happens to somebody when you're 17 years old and you have this horrible trauma perpetrated on you and you have no help. There are no mental health people that swoop in and help her. And so this is a woman who's carried for 40 years, her entire adult life, this trauma. And as we are seeing in the world today, all of these women, primarily women, mm -hmm. who have been traumatized in all sorts of ways, physical violence, emotional violence, sexual violence, and in Lori's case, actual, you know, knife attack violence. All of those women are having the moment where they will no longer allow that to be the narrative. No longer does that define them. That they are standing up and saying, 
enough. Mm. And this is a movie about enough at a time when it happens to be a national and worldwide message. And so it couldn't be timed better and it couldn't have been written better. Because you see, what other life could Laurie Strode have? Mm -hmm. She was 17. Your connection to this movie, because remember, there was nothing like this when, when Halloween hit. Yeah. And it blew everybody away. You've had a weird connection all your life. This has been a big part of your life. Are you ready to let this go? Can this be the end? You know, the way I like to look at it, and uh, I'm not being morbid, is as we all will, every one of us in this lovely room, we will all die one day. And I will tell you that when I die, the headline will be, Halloween actress dies. And I couldn't be more proud to think that something, this was a fictional character written 40 years ago, written probably longer than 40 years ago, that I had the great privilege of playing when I was 19 years old. And now 40 years later, kissing 60, I am having the opportunity to play her again. So that's the privilege. I'm, I'm wildly thrilled. Do people still put on hockey masks and try to scare you? It's the Everybody wrong movie, the... baby. Right, but do people ever do that? What, Michael Myers? Oh, he pulled on the mask. He, he was like, no, 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 baby. Mommy the mask. knows her. Right. He pulled on the mask. He pulled on the mask. I am like, he that was another mask. movie. Right, he pulled on the mask. I think that mask. was Friday the 13th, wasn't Whoa. it? Hockey mask? I've heard of it, yeah. Yes. He pulled on the mask. Yeah. Do people try to scare me? Do people try to scare you. Have you been watching the news? <laughs> Well, of course, there are people in the news that scare you, but I'm Have talking about... Have you been watching yeah, I, the news? I've been watching the news. Do the words GOP mean anything <laughs> to you in the sense of what is terrifying? It's terrifying out there. The world terrifies me. A guy, you know... In a mask. In a mask uh, does not. Um, the words GOP terrifies me. Sorry, everybody. <laughs> By the way, did you see Roseanne's meltdown? No. Did you see it? Oh, Where okay. was it? Uh, it's, it's pretty much everywhere. Recent? Oh, yeah, just yesterday. Oh, no, no, no. I've been uh, hyping. Can I show it to you? No. Okay. No. All right. okay. All right. No, no, I don't need Roseanne's meltdown. I have my own meltdown. Thank you very much. I know we should all be having a meltdown. Thank you very much. And if we're not all having a meltdown, there's a problem. But let's talk it? about Halloween. Let's talk about Halloween. Let's okay. talk about Halloween. Have you been back to, and will you go back to Haddonfield for this? There is no Haddonfield. There is no Haddonfield in this one? There no, is I no mean, Haddonfield back, ever. Is, no, 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 there's somewhere near Haddonfield that you guys use, right? Isn't that true? There is no, uh, but it, it's a, a fake city. No, but there's a place near where you, isn't it based on a city in? Yes, Deborah Hill, I believe. It's yeah. New Jersey, right? It was in yeah. New Jersey. It's in New Jersey. Cherry Hill is where. The movie takes place in Illinois, and we, are, we have returned to Haddonfield where we find Laurie in a series, some, some, some familiar characters will, will journey uh, back to Haddonfield and, and then enjoy our, our return to some cinematic destinies. There's a place, Jamie, there's a... Wow. I'm gonna, as soon as we get out, I'm gonna... You gonna text me? I'm gonna text you. Okay, gonna, send me Roseanne's <laughs> meltdown I'm and gonna, that. I'm gonna send it to you. All okay, right. good. Um, Michael Myers, finally. I mean, this is a guy who hasn't died in my lifetime. So is this finally it? We'll see, we'll see. I never read it. I just showed up and just learned up. my lines, and I can't wait to see what happens. It's actually a musical. Have you seen it yet? Have of course. You seen it? Okay. Are you ready to go over there? Is that where I'm going now? Yes, you're going across. No, going no, over. see, people are shaking their head. You're going over, are you going? I will go there at some point, apparently. Do you enjoy Comic-Con? I enjoy people loving things. Mm -hmm. I'm, a, I'm a lover. I, you know, uh, I was listening to the radio and there's this new band called Greta Van Fleet. I love them. Mm -hmm. And there is just nothing like loving something and going like, wow. And if that's what people have for this genre and the movies that I've been in and the movies David has made, then that's why you do it is so mm -hmm. that people will love it. So in that sense, when I joke about like, oh, do I have to go over there? You know, it's an onslaught. I, like that is not my life. This is not my life. Um, you know, this is a promotion for a movie, and we will promote it well. I live a very quiet, private life, so does David. Um, but do I love it? I love that people love it. People love this movie. They love it. I mean, and yeah. in response, they love me. 
And I, I am not saying that as a personal there are a few other hit. There are a few other movies you did that people, because okay, a lot of people love but, yeah. but there's some, you know, the word fan, you know, that fandom, that thing that people love. We've all, you went to film school, I've worked for 40 plus years mm -hmm. to, have, to make something that people love. We all want to be loved. Mm -hmm. Everybody wants to have their work respected. I'm sure when people come up and they say they like your show, yeah. it makes you feel good. So how can it be anything but that when you give them something as delicious as David did to make this movie as terrifying as it is and then be able to walk into a group of people and go, like for instance, uh, our friend who we met today saw the movie and your first word out of your mouth was, oh my God, it's amazing. But you see, that's love. That's mm -hmm. beautiful to me. All right, 6,000 6, people they're saying. What the world needs now. Is, more is love, sweet love. <laughs> hey, uh, one other quick thing. So Are there we can any... start singing. Mm. It's the only thing <laughs> that there's just too little of. Sorry. Um, are, any, are any other <laughs> original <Force>. characters <laughs> in the movie? Are any other original characters or anybody else from the original coming back? Yes. This one? The answer is yes. But we can't say who. Oh, you can't say who. Hmm. You'll have to kill me. <laughs> Lord knows people have tried, right? Yeah. <laughs>